So I've been playing with NVIDIA AI Workstation and how it deploys containerized environments locally and uses those remote resources like language models in the cloud. And it's really kind of plugged into this NVIDIA inference microservice architecture. And what you can do is you can, well, you know what? So we have NVIDIA AI Workstation. We have this NVIDIA um, inference microservice architecture, and they have created uh, a project that kind of combines those and lets you play with those, you know, kind of gives you somewhere to start. And so in the demo project um, in AI Workbench, which is the NIM Anywhere project, they have kind of a set of front end user interface services that you could, uh, or where you can write your own code or you could customize those or build new front end services. And then they have a set of back end integrations by default. And then this NIM Anywhere project, they have a Redis uh, cache that they use a conversation history, a Milvis vector database that they use as um, a document store for like doing rag behavior. Um, and then they have a set of large language models or other models uh, that basically can be talked to as endpoints. <laughs> and the way the AI workbench is everything's a deployed container. So in this case, the Redis and the Milvis are always deployed local and the language models can be deployed remote anywhere. You can use the NVIDIA ones or you can use your deployment in your own places. And then you would use the workbench user interface, Jupyter Notebook or uh, Visual Studio Code to write your own front ends. And I'm gonna show you kind of what those look like. So we have, this is the NIM Anywhere project as it is by default, which is a straight up chat server. Um, and it's got three large language, three models in it. It's got two databases and um, you know, a couple other services. And I'm gonna show you what those look like. So this is the Python app that they built on top of this. And then this is the chain server that the front ends built on top of the chain server, right? It's a pretty wrapper on kind of this uh, default dashboard. And then we have uh, the Jupyter Lab server that comes out of that same container. Um, and <coughs> that lets us write code. And that's how they would have developed this application unless they use Visual Studio Code, right? So this is this sample project, NIM Anywhere, and it is a containerized environment. One of the things I wanted to say is the DNS names, the names of all the containers, um, because the names of the DNS names and the container names be the same, be the same, are the same, and I'll talk to you, let me describe why that's important here. So if we look at what they actually put in this NIM Anywhere project, it's actually kind of cool, and this is completely containerized, either local or remote or a mix, and by default it's a mix, and they expose the user interface this is actually with a traffic proxy. So if you look at uh, this Docker network, which is actually where this gets installed, let's start on the right because everybody's interested in models. Um, they have three models. They have a large language model, the embedding model, the re-ranking model. By default, those run in the NVIDIA cloud, but you can actually deploy those locally. They provide the container definitions for that. You could run them locally or you could deploy your own group of services if you wanted, like if you didn't want any traffic leaving your network, you could uh, deploy your own set of services. Um, and this project gives you an example how that works. So in this case, we have these three models, their containers have the same name as the models, and they all listen on port 8000, which is the NVIDIA um, NIM uh, inference uh, microservice architecture kind of standard port. So in this case, uh, by default, when you use the NIM Anywhere project for the chat server that I showed you, uh, basically you're using three models remote. I have played with this. I brought the LLM NIM Zero, the Llama 3 8B Instruct. I brought that local. I have a 24 gig um, Titan RTX card and I kind of hacked it to do the definition to do FP16, uh, floating point 16. And so um, I actually ran one of these local and the other two models remote. And actually when you bring this up, it's so transparent, you don't realize you're talking to models of the, the NVIDIA cloud uh, once you get an NVIDIA token, but you can put those anywhere you want. So if you had a boundary issue where you wanted to never leave trap traffic, leave your network, you can do that too. It's pretty cool. I think they're still working on that part. So the other two containers on the back end on the integrations, right? So the right hand three containers in the Milvis and the Redis cache are all kind of the integration containers. Uh, those are listening on standard ports and because the containers were given those names, uh, if you wanna to connect to them, you just connect to, you know, Redis colon, 
6379 blah, slash blah, 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 right? Or Melvis call in 19530 slash blah, 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 right? And so those are the two containers. One's for the vector database for documents and one's the his chat history. Uh, the left-hand one is really the primary container, which is actually where you're going to do all your development. Um, that's the project NIM Anywhere container. So its host name is in DNS inside the Docker cluster is project NIM Anywhere. And it basically, the starting from the bottom, it has the chain server I showed you, which has configuration uh, for a bunch of these pieces. And then you've got the chat front end uh, that knows how to talk to some of the various services. And there's config files that are available for that. And then there's Jupyter Lab, which actually runs inside the same container image and the Jupyter Lab. And what's interesting here is all three of these have to listen on different ports inside that container. And that lets us um, all three of them run inside the same container image. So basically the code for the application and development for the application is all done inside this project name anywhere container. You can also edit the configurations that define this entire environment in there. The other thing you can do is you can use VS code. Um, they actually added that in it. Basically it just uses the container remote capability and it drops a VS code backend server into that container, probably over SSH, and then it lets you run um, that remotely. So you can do VS code into that container. And then they have a Git. Um, that's all has, uh, is, you know, this whole thing's out of Git. And so when you make changes to those, you can commit those um, in VS code, or you can uh, do it using the interface they provide, or you can add get to the Jupyter Lab. The last thing is how do I actually see these when I showed you the user interfaces, right? I kind of showed you uh, this, the NIM Anywhere chat app, the uh, chain server and the Jupyter Lab. You can see all of those on my local machine. It turns out they use a traffic, all of AI Workstation uses this traffic proxy. Uh, so localhost 10,000 projects NIM Anywhere applications is that traffic proxy. So you can actually run multiple projects, uh, different AI work pen gets get projects and they'll come in on that same traffic proxy under uh, this part, right? So it's 10,000 projects, what the project name is, and then the applications and whatever applications are deployed. And so I can actually see those on my local machine on port 10,000. And that's because this Docker network is on my local machine on port 10,000. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you can do other work to get these all either to make these public uh, since it's on localhost nobody can see it and attach to your machine you don't have to worry about anybody chatting through this if you were to deploy this into a server environment obviously you would set this traffic proxy up a little differently to expose these on that machine and then you'd figure out how to do forwarding to that so that's the end of this what i really wanted to just show is if you're in the project nim anywhere uh, kind of what is it laid out with and what are the various components and what containers do they run in? So that's it. Have a great day. Go play with AI Workbench and the NIM Anywhere project, which keeps changing. So this document will probably be old and out of date in a couple months.